Welcome to Truth Is What Matters. I am your host, Brad Snell, and my co-host, Mr. Ray Luff. And what are we going to talk today on today's show, Ray? I thought today we'd talk about uh, why the Bible is a true book and why it's different than every other writing. Why is it so unique to everybody else? Because as, as we mentioned a few comments on our website, we mentioned the different versions of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to save that for another show, but why do you think the Bible is so unique to people now? Considering a lot of people are really losing their religion and they're flocking away from the churches. Well, the Bible offers something that no other religious book offers, and that is that it's a book of prophecy. 25% uh, of the Bible is prophetic, and 12.5% of, of the 25% has been fulfilled throughout history. And there's still about 12.5% of the Bible that still remains to be fulfilled. So when we talk about prophecies, not only in 2012 this year, but beyond, the Bible has come true with a lot of the prophecies that, that that's written in the different books? That's right. Um, no, um, the, the principle of telling the future was laid down to um, Moses mm -hmm. uh, near the beginning. Uh, Moses is the writer of the first five books of the Old Testament portion of the Bible and um, God told him things about the future that were fulfilled during his lifetime. So the people that followed Moses kept everything that he wrote because they, he had proven that he was a true prophet of God. Um, and part of what um, he wrote down were the rules that God gave him for what a true prophet was and what a false prophet was. And basically a false prophet is somebody who might make a single error in mm -hmm. their prophecies. If, if somebody makes any error in what they say is going to happen, um, then the Bible calls them a false prophet and it tells you to have nothing to do with that person. But, but when, when we go into people like Nostradamus who, who had predictions that really came true to this day and age, um, he really didn't really have too many of his prophecies not fulfilled. Am I correct there? Or? Well, Nostradamus, a lot of what he had to say fell into the general scope of the Bible. Uh, he was a, a person who read the Bible. So anybody that says anything that's going to happen near the end of the age is still talking about a subject that the Bible brings up, that there's going to be an end of an age. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the things that he said were within the framework of, of agreeing with what the Bible already says. So anything that a person would say that agrees with what the Bible is teaching, uh, they, they're, they're bound to be correct because the Bible has always been proven to be a 100% true prophetic book. Um, in some of the areas where Nostradamus uh, switches to what he thinks, some of the things that he has said uh, could never possibly come true historically. Um, so uh, he's, he's not considered to be 100% accurate and most of his inaccuracies are when he deviates from what the Bible already says. And most of his accuracies are when he agrees with what the Bible already says. But when we talk about looking into the future and, and, and prophecies, some people look at it as, as we go into psychics, we go into astrologers, we look into people who can look into the future. Isn't there another name for them rather than uh, prophecy fulfillers? You're, you're good, Brad, because I, we've had conversations before and you prompted me well. Um, the, the other name given is seer. Yes. Uh, a person who can see the future, a seer of the future. And you'll find that the Bible refers to seers um, early in, in the scriptures, and then later on it refers to prophets. And um, you'll get an example where Saul went to have the dead spirit um, conjured up of um, one of the, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the priest, a priest who had died, he wanted advice from this priest through a seer. And he didn't get the kind of advice he was looking for. And um, the Bible has a way of telling us things that, that occur, uh, whether they're good or bad things. Just the, the fact that the Bible records that, that Saul went to see a seer does not mean we should go to see seers. Um, but the Bible tells it like it is. The Bible tells you when David sinned with Bathsheba um, and caused her husband to be murdered so that he could marry Bathsheba uh, by sending him to the, to the front of the lines in the battle and, and ask, telling the other soldiers to back away so he would get killed in the battle. 
the Bible tells us that David did this. It doesn't say that we should be treating people that way as if we're the king of a country. Um, the same thing when it mentions Sears. Um, the Bible does not condone the use of clairvoyance and seers and, and, mm -hmm. and people that tell the future unless those people can prove that they're 100% accurate. And the domain of 100% accuracy resides with the prophets of the Bible and nobody else. No one has ever been able to touch the accuracy of the writers of the Bible in that regard. Well, as you know, a lot of astrologers and seers and psychics are making a lot of money with people out there foretelling their future, going back in time, conjuring up loved ones. Um, people can go into Ouija boards, people can get possessed by the spirits at their seances. And that, isn't that a form of, of, of witchcraft or demonology? I mean, start conjuring up spirits or... Yeah, there's some theories on that. Um... You know, some people think that, well, there might be some truth to seeking these kinds of spiritual advice that aren't the kind that the Bible would tell us to seek. And the theory behind that is that there are two types of, of spiritual presences in the world. The, the, the angels that are sent from God and the fallen angels that have fallen away from God and follow their, their leader, Satan. And um, it's believed that the fallen angels know some things that they can use to trick us through using seers, but that God keeps the pure knowledge of absolute knowledge of the future to himself. So if something's revealed by God, it will always happen. If something's revealed through a seer that might be influenced by Satan and his fallen angels, then it, it might be a good guess, but they don't know exactly what's going to happen like, like God does. Um, the Bible presents Satan as being like the moon who can reflect light, as opposed to God himself is the source of light. So uh, the Bible says if we were ever to meet Satan, it would be a very beautiful person that we met. Very glorious looking, but only a reflection of the glory of what God's glory is. Well, how do these people know once they see seers or, or psychics, whether, whether they are believing um, the right person, as you mentioned, whether they're believing Satan or God? How do they know who to follow well, from the advice of the, of the seer? Well, the, the Bible gives a test. The Bible says that if a prophet makes a single error, that you're to not listen to them. And so we get at the beginning of every calendar year people that tell us what's going to happen this year coming up, that they think is going to happen. And then often those things don't happen, but they'll always say, well, 20% of the time this person's right. Like they'll, they'll talk about the odds of how often a person is right who tells the, these things. So um, if you were to apply the Bible standard, then we would say that those people are not true prophets of God, that they, they are not to be listened to. An example of a, of a false prophet um, is a man um, in the Christian domain named Benny Hinn. Now, Benny Hinn made prophecies that the entire North America would be consumed in flames before the year 2000. And the Bible gives some indication that a third of the world will be confirmed soon in flames. So that's a biblical prophecy, but he set a date on it. And we don't know if it's North America that would be consumed in flames, but, but Benny Hinn said it, North America would be wiped out, probably by an atomic bomb. I'm not sure exactly because he didn't elaborate. But because he made that prophecy, then he threw himself into the domain of being a false prophet. Because the Bible says if you make a prediction and it doesn't come true, then you're a false prophet. So he, he dabbled with being a seer, and some of the things he said would happen and wouldn't happen and all that. But it's a total no-no for a person who follows Christ to, to get involved in speculation of the future unless they're claiming to be a true prophet. And there's a lot of scandal of evolving, involving these, I call, strip, strip mall evangelists, such as uh, Benny Hinn, which has the million-dollar houses and the million-dollar cars and supposed to um, actually heal people if they're crippled or, or, or walk or any kind of speech impediment. What's your opinion of all this uh, circus shenanigans going on with a person like, as you mentioned, Benny Hinn, actually making people walk with polio or cancer or cure them? That? What's your opinion of that? Well, um, the uh, first of all, I look at whether it's, you know, if a person says they're a prophet and they're not a prophet, um, so I, I've already said what I think about that regarding that person in particular. The other thing I look at is is what are they giving and what are they taking? You know, a, a, a ministry that's trying to gather everybody's money mm -hmm. and piling, piling it all on a person, um, I'm very suspicious of. And um, 
The kinds of healings that you see often in these types of campaigns are what you would call psychosomatic healings, where um, where people are, are emotionally being healed, or something that's not very tangible. Um, when you get a person who's missing a limb, you never see the limb get reattached. No, no like, like a lizard anything, or nothing obvious ever happens. Yeah. Uh, and there's many, many stories of people that are held back by guards that are watching the, 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 the aisle way so that they won't go up to ask for healing. When they come in in a wheelchair, they won't let them go up. Mm -hmm. And then they have somebody else in a wheelchair that's allowed to go up. But often people have stories about why I came in a wheelchair and they wouldn't let me go there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, the, the, uh, the accusation is that perhaps there are fake people in wheelchairs that they're allowing to go up because they know they're going to be able to get out of their wheelchair, whereas the real guy who shows up in his wheelchair isn't allowed to get near the guy that's preaching. So, I mean, there's been lots of documentaries that, that seem to indicate that that happens in a lot of... Uh, well, what about faith healers? Do you believe people have the ability to actually heal people with faith, such as get rid of a disease? Um, the Bible teaches... Um, a concept where you can ask for prayer for healing and where you can have the elders of a church come and put their hands on you and, and uh, pray over you. And it's something that's offered to people that worship Christ, that are part of a church community. And I know of some examples where that's happened. Mm -hmm. um, there, the examples of a person themselves um, exhibiting it as, uh, as a personal ministry um, I believe that that type of thing ended with the apostles that followed Christ and mm -hmm. that the, because the Bible teaches us how healing is to be formed in the church the way I just described and, and I believe there was a shift away from the way that Jesus and the apostles did it and the way the church does it today through prayer and the other thing is when we pray we ask for God's will and sometimes God doesn't give us the answer we want God might say no and we have to be willing to accept his answer. So it, the, the presentation that's often made is that it's a guaranteed thing. And that if it doesn't happen, it's your fault because you didn't have enough faith. Well, if you have enough faith, you have faith in God for what God wants. And you're asking God, if you were willing to do this, please do it. But you're saying that I'm willing for whatever your will is, even if you don't agree with my will when you approach God. Uh, we don't force God to do our will, and, and a lot of people are, are trying to force God to do their will in the way they present healing today. They act like if they scream and yell and things like that, they're going to make God do what they want. And um, I, the Bible does present healing as, as a possibility through prayer, um, but God is sovereign. We are not sovereign in that process. But we have been drifting off the original topic. I mean, it's good to talk about mm. these fringe topics. Mm. Um, and, and it does seem, there is that aspect where people draw attention to themselves through these things. When a person's a seer, then pe they get followers. And when people try to imitate the gifts of healing that are in the Bible, then they get people that follow them because of that. So there is a lot of attention that comes to people that are involved in those things. But the Bible makes a very clear distinction between the standard that the Bible has for it. And um, I'd just like to um, take a break at this point for a second because I'd like to get out a letter so that we can read a little bit of that when we come back and just read a little bit of what part of a book that I wrote a while back to concisely explain what the Bible what makes the Bible so unique in regards to prophecy. You are listening to truthiswhatmatters.com and we're always open to your comments and suggestions. Stay tuned we'll be right back with the second half of the show. Welcome to Truth Is What Matters. I am your host, Brad Snell, and my co-host, Mr. Ray Luff. And what are we going to talk today on today's show, Ray? I thought today we'd talk about uh, why the Bible is a true book and why it's different than every other writing. Why is it so unique to everybody else? Because as, we're going to, as we mentioned a few comments on our website, we mentioned the different versions of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to save that for another show, but why do you think the Bible is so unique to people now? Considering a lot of people are really losing their religion and they're flocking away from the churches. Well, the Bible offers something that no other religious book offers, and that is that it's a book of prophecy. 25% uh, of the Bible is prophetic, 
and 12.5% of the, of the 25% has been fulfilled throughout history. And there's still about 12.5% of the Bible that still remains to be fulfilled. So when we talk about prophecies, not only in 2012 this year, but beyond, the Bible has come true with a lot of the prophecies that, that, that's written in the different books? That's right. Um, no, um, the, the principle of telling the future was laid down to um, Moses. Mm -hmm. uh, near the beginning. Uh, Moses is the writer of the first five books of the Old Testament portion of the Bible and um, God told him things about the future that were fulfilled during his lifetime. So the people that followed Moses kept everything that he wrote because they, he had